Welcome to the shooting show. Stand by for shots fired. Hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of the shooting show, and welcome to today's program. Tell you what, here in Louisiana, yes, it does eventually get cold, and, and trust me, it's a little nippy out here today, but it's still a nice day to be out shooting. And of course, you expected me to say that. We're so glad to have you. I think we have another uh, really fine show for you. We have some things, I think, that are going to educate you as well as, as find entertaining. And, you know, friends, let me remind you, of course, we're heading uh, this season of the year as a season to be thankful, to think about what we have. And also, we need to think about what we need to get back. And, of course, I'm talking about some of our rights as citizens, some of our rights as gun owners. Now, a lot of things, Newt Gingrich is saying some pretty good things. Some of the other uh, new congressmen, some of the new senators are saying some things that, that we really do appreciate. And now's the time to get to work, to write those letters, to make those phone calls to your congressman and to your senator and tell them how you feel. Well, my gosh, they've even got the Clintonian scares. <laughs> it couldn't, couldn't happen to a nicer, more deserving group of people. Uh, some of the people in the White House, uh, including uh, the man or woman or whoever it is, in fact, who's really in charge up there, uh, they're having some cause for concern, and it's a good thing. Doggone it. It's time they're concerned. It's time they figure out what it is that the American people are going to stand for. Well, let's get another program underway and get started with some things. Now, friends, we're going to look at a very collectible gun today. It's most unusual. In fact, this is the first one I've ever really handled and had the pleasure to uh, shoot. This is a Winchester Model 59, and this was called the Winlight model. And the reason it's called a Winlight is because this black barrel on here is a very thin uh, steel barrel wrapped in fiberglass. Now, one of the things, this is a really an interesting gun and probably uh, Winchester uh, just guessing because everything I've heard about these guns has been real good the model 50 I believe that was their uh, recoil operated this is in fact a recoil operated gun and recoil operated shotguns have become very popular for instance the Benelli uh, which we've had on the program a number of times a very fine shotgun a lot of people use them in competition uh, is a very similar design now, I haven't taken this thing down but as far as the principle of it working is very similar. Now, one of the things uh, these guns had a reputation for was a pretty severe kick, but uh, if you think about it, the gun is very, very light. Uh, that's the reason that Winchester put the uh, uh, fiberglass there around the barrel because it made the barrel much, much lighter. And of course it has, it look, appears to be an aluminum type receiver, so really the gun is very light. And yes, when you have a 12 gauge shotgun, it is going to have some recoil, uh, in this case, uh, certainly from a very, very light gun. But I've been impressed just looking at the gun. Uh, this one is also, our good folks, uh, good friends at Britain's have uh, loaned us this gun, of course, for testing. We really do appreciate it. Now then, if someone out there would be interested in, and like we said, this is a very uh, desirable uh, and collectible gun. Uh, there's just almost none of these around. The concept, I think, was so new. Uh, you know, back when this gun was made, back I'm going to guess this gun was made in the early 60s, maybe the late 50s, certainly the early 60s, and people said, a what, a fiberglass barrel, what? And nobody knew a whole heck of a lot about fiberglass or epoxy or any of these what they call newfangled space age materials, but uh, you can bet on this. Winchester wouldn't have put one of the, uh, a gun like this out without a very thorough uh, testing program. You know, in the early 60s, Remington had some very futuristic guns and some of them that flatly didn't sell. And today's XP-100, one of the most, probably the single most accurate uh, gun that comes out of the Remington factory are some of the XP-100s from the custom shop. And it dates back to that period of very futuristic things. Well, you know, the United States and the rest of, well, for that matter, the Russians and uh, the writers around the world were writing about science fiction, about space age stuff. So uh, naturally, and there were a lot of new materials, a lot of new concepts arriving on the scene in the late 50s and early 60s, and a whole bunch, and we can go all the way back to the end of World War II, just a lot of new concepts and materials. And so the manufacturers started taking advantage, started doing a little uh, exploring as far as what would and would not work. Well, let's take a look. I have some light, also oh, number eight loads here. Let's take a look at the gun under. Let's just see how much it does kick with the light loads. Now that's 
Again, we're talking birdshot. And I didn't really notice a problem with that. And one of the huge advantages to this gun was you could carry it all day and not be tired because it just doesn't weigh that much. Now let's run another experiment. Of course you load the gun. We'll take a closer look in just a moment. But you load the gun. Of course you can load it like so. Press that button on the side and uh, we'll put another couple of shells in the magazine there. Very fast function. That is something that uh, is pretty well known about recoil, a short recoil, I'm going to call it short recoil. The bolt has a spring here that comes back into the stock in the action and that's under recoil the bolt literally it, it unlocks, rotates, comes back and compresses the spring, ejects the hull, picks up another one out of, out of the magazine there. But these guns are very fast and you know probably the truth of the matter is this gun was ahead of its time because I've talked to dealers that used to sell these guns and, and according to what I can hear, mechanically they were real good. Uh, the, again, this is the first one I've ever really handled, uh, but it, it certainly does appear to be a very fine functioning shotgun. For bird hunting or something where you had to be real fast uh, to get into action, I would think it would be a superior choice. Well, let's run an experiment. We have our pro timer on here from the good folks at Competition Electronics and on the Benelli guns that we tested, uh, as fast as I can shoot a Benelli shotgun was about two tenths of a second or eighteen hundredths, pretty right around two tenths of a second between shots. Now that's as fast as I can pull the trigger. On a pump gun it takes me about twice that long, which you're still not talking about a whole heck of a lot of time, but uh, uh, in this case if you could shoot the gun, if you had five shells, you could get uh, theoretically get five shells for, uh, in under a second, which you can do with the Benelli. I mean, that's talking about at, at my level of shooting. Someone better than me certainly could do a lot better. But let's see, let's compare, uh, and our timer will do that. It will tell us the time between shots. Let's do a little rapid fire and just see how fast at least this thing will work for me this afternoon. Here we go. Our timer is on, and we'll press the uh, start button there. Well, now that was three shots, including my reaction time, in seven tenths of a second. So that's going to be pretty good, I would think. Let's review them. The first uh, 28. All right, difference. Okay, 19 hundredths of a second per shot. Uh, tell you what, friends, that's as fast as I can shoot a gun. Uh, tell you the truth. Uh, Needless to say, that we hadn't done this experiment before, but that, that just tells me one thing, that this gun runs as fast as a Benelli, uh, certainly in my hands, and that's one of the selling points that the Benelli has had uh, for a number of years, and I say it's the fastest action shotgun, the fastest repeating shotgun that money can buy. Well, guess what? <laughs> Winchester had one uh, 30 years ago that would, uh, at least in my hands today, will will run as fast as I can shoot anything, uh, anything semi-automatic, pulling the trigger each time. I mean, that's just as fast as I can run a gun. So that is really an interesting concept. Well, let's take a closer look. I think you'll find this barrel interesting. You know, friends, this box of Corbin ammunition and this Wesson 41 Magnum are, in fact, a perfect match for each other. But it doesn't matter whatever gun you may have, like this SKS or a hunting rifle or a 38 Special or a 9mm makes no difference because Corbin is absolutely the best factory ammunition that money can buy, period. And also, friends, when you see a box of Corbin on the shelf or you give them a call, realize that Corbin is helping keep the shooting show on the air. They've been one of our most dedicated sponsors. You cannot find finer people in the entire shooting industry. For information on Corbin ammunition, call them 1-800-626-7266. Again, 1-800-626-7266. Tell them you saw it on the shooting show. Yes, friends, we have checked and triple checked. Uh, be sure this thing's unloaded. Look at the end of the barrel here, and you can see on the inside there is a very thin liner. If I can hold it still, it'll be easier to see. Anyway, and it's surrounded on the outside here by, uh, by fiberglass, but they felt like it were with the pressures of a shotgun that that uh, thin liner there would be plenty and give it the extra strength of the fiberglass and honestly I've never heard of one of these blowing up but it is really uh, a different uh, concept and one that I think probably should be examined today. 
Well, friends, you can tell, of course, this gun is in remarkably good condition. Someone may have cleaned off the anodizing off the uh, trigger guard there. Here's your safety. Of course, push for fire, press back this way for safe. And the way you load the gun, you'll press this button, and that releases the uh, little uh, piece here so you can put shells into the magazine. And you have a spring back here. And of course, you can watch the action. It unlocks and uh, it starts back, and then See, it gets some momentum there. You get a little inertia. The action starts back here under recoil, and then it unlocks the bolt there. Of course, it comes on back and compressing your spring and all back here. Of course, it locks in place uh, very straight forward. And of course, to release the action, you'll press this button here. Uh, very uh, heck of an idea. Like I said, probably just ahead of its time. Well, friends, we thought this was something different that we'd show you, and we do appreciate the good folks at Britain's. Incidentally, now this gun, which uh, I think is very collectible, and you can see it works really well. Uh, we've had zero malfunctions with it in shooting. Uh, and it does have some, some recoil, but, but heck, any recoil-operated shotgun, especially one that weighs as, as little as this one does, uh, is certainly you can expect that. Now you could put, uh, if recoil really bothers you and you want to shoot something like buckshot out of it, well, heck, I'd wear one of the past recoil pads or something like that. Uh, to really uh, take the sting out of it. But this is a gun that you can carry all day. It's not going to make you as tired because it is light. And the good folks at Britain's, and I will put in a little plug for them there, this gun uh, is priced at, I believe it's $275. And I think that's really a bargain for a gun that is as unusual and as rare as this one. So if anyone would like to have this, give them a call in their number, area 318-221-4131. Again, 318 318- 2214131. Also, let me mention that uh, Britain's is moving from their downtown store in Shreveport. They have a, another location out on Hollywood, and that's going to be their headquarters now. It's a very nice store, and they'll have more room out there. I think that's uh, their main consideration. But uh, anyway, uh, give them a call if you'd be interested in this uh, Model 59, the wind light. Uh, and I think $275 is, is a really good uh, price for a gun like this. It certainly is in excellent condition. Well, Let's finish up our piece here with, and you know, you've heard me say many times, nothing as far as long guns goes is faster than a shotgun for hit potential. Well, let's see what it looks like. The rest of my case. <laughs> Hello, friends. I'm out here practicing for one of the most fun hunting sports that you can imagine. You can use a variety of action types. You have access to uh, year-round hunting, some cases no limits, and you get to use a variety of guns. Well, you know what I'm talking about is the sport of varmint hunting. And we need to introduce you folks to varmint hunting. A lot of us have been doing it for years and didn't know what to call it. But we especially need to introduce you to the Varmint Hunter magazine. You know, friends, varmint hunting is one of the fastest growing shooting sports in the world. In fact, the Varmint Hunters Association, they have members in all 50 states and 19 foreign countries. Now, their magazine focuses on varmint hunting and super accurate reloading and shooting techniques. Plus, there's a lot of humor, a lot of interesting cartoons and humorous articles in the magazine. Uh, incidentally, the magazine is large. It's very high quality and something I think you're really going to enjoy reading, and it's published quarterly. It's only $24 for an associate membership in the Varmint Hunters Association. And look, for information, now you ought to do this. If you're a dedicated shooter, this is something I think you're really going to enjoy. For information on the Varmint Hunter magazine and the Varmint Hunters Association, call them at one 800 528-4868. Again, 1-800-528-4868. Be sure and tell them you saw it on The Shooting Show. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
Friends, all of us as shooting enthusiasts should be subscribing to Shotgun News, the trading post for anything that shoots. Three big issues monthly with literally thousands and thousands of firearms bargains. Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska, the zip code 68902, their phone number, area 402-463-4589, MasterCard or Visa for subscriptions only. Now call them at 1-800-345-6923. Well, friends, we hope you're enjoying our program. We just hope you enjoy it half as much as we enjoy bringing it to you because for Kurt, the judge, and myself, it is such a labor that we know has to be done, something that is so important to us. And, of course, my esteemed colleague here, well, sir, looks like you've got a piece of information that I think folks are really going to want to know about. Well, now, remember, Johnny, last week I told you that despite the fact that we had gotten some improvement in the Congress, the House, and the Senate, that we still have the problem in 50 states, or just about 50 states, uh, and in every county and in every village and every town, every city, uh, we end up with politicians that get it in their head that they need to enact some sort of gun control measures. And we've got several situations here that have come up just uh, in, to my knowledge today. I got a fax from the NRA. And it seems that uh, a few days ago, on December 8th, handgun control, you know, that's Sarah Brady's bunch, uh, held a press conference. They were kicking off a national media blitz attacking the NRA's defense of the Second Amendment and leveling a series of false charges against the NRA. Now the ads are going to appear in major cities uh, such as Boston, Kansas City, Salisbury, Maryland, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Tucson, Arizona. The, fads, the ads feature Sarah Brady with a new pal, former Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court turned gun control champion Warren Burger. Well, I think a lot of us were not very happy with some of Mr. Burger's, former Justice Burger's uh, uh, opinions and so forth while he was on the court, so I don't see why they need to be leveled any greater degree of respect or accord now than they were then. Uh, but the ads claim that the courts have never thrown out a gun control law on Second Amendment grounds. That's not true. Yes, they have. 150 years ago, actually 148 years ago, in the case of Nunn versus State, and then in this century, N. Ray Brinkley, uh, the ads claim that the NRA has deliberately distorted the meaning of the Second Amendment. Now, boy, that is really something. That's a pot calling a kettle black, if I ever saw one. Uh, it's, the, it's HCI that distorts the meaning of the Second Amendment. Every scholarly work that's been done on that issue, and I've cited some law review articles to you here in the past. Uh, one of them is called The Embarrassing Second Amendment. Uh, but almost every scholarly work that's been done on the subject has concluded, after a review of history and facts, that the Second Amendment is an individual right. The, uh, the ads further challenge the NRA to bring a case to try to get the Supreme Court to hear a challenge on the basis of the Second Amendment. Well, you know, that's... <laughs> That's kind of silly because in the Martin Grove, you remember Martin Grove, Martin Grove, Illinois is a, is a town that uh, banned guns or banned the sale of guns or whatever it was uh, that they did Hand with guns. Handguns, I believe, uh, uh, made handguns illegal. Uh, the NRA did bring a suit and sought to have the Supreme Court review it, and it was HCI that petitioned the Supreme Court not to hear it. It wasn't the NRA that hasn't brought the action. It's the it's HCI that opposes it. Says, hey, 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 don't don't listen to them. Mm -hmm. Now how about that? Well it's not surprising. Uh, of course handgun control started off with that. 
And of course, now they oppose any gun ownership. In fact, and that this is their bottom line, they oppose any gun ownership among civilians in the United States. Well, Johnny, that's hypocrisy on horseback. Sure it is. Sure it is. Uh, that's just as bad as Clinton. That's saying one thing and sure. doing another. And doing another. Uh, and, you know, we, we hear about in the news, I wanted to mention this, uh, uh, there's some movement in this country, even among the Clintonians, to free up the arms sales to Bosnia because the Muslims don't have enough individual arms to defend themselves. And we don't really know what the United Nations, <clears throat> I don't think you can, you can follow a line of reasoning from the United Nations because there's not any. But I do believe, uh, except destruction of free societies everywhere, that's what the United Nations is all about. But uh, the UN has had an em arms embargo against the Bosnians, and the Serbians had all the weapons. And for what unknown reason, I saw the lady from uh, Margaret Thatcher say on uh, uh, Meet the Press or Face the Nation, one of these Sunday morning programs, saying, why don't you just allow the Bosnians to be armed where they can defend themselves? Yet, some of this same lineage of, of loony thought uh, and, and even the Clintons are saying now, well, why not let's, let's free up the arms embargo to the Bible? Well, you know, Johnny, the same, the same uh, uh, reasoning applies to, the, to John Q. Citizen. Allow us to have guns to defend ourselves. We can take care of that. The police can't be everywhere all the time. We don't really expect them to be everywhere all the time. Now, on top of that, the courts have held that the police don't have a duty to defend you. They don't have a duty to protect your property. Uh, I don't know who got that idea because it seems to me that that's a very reason for having them. Uh, <laughs> I remember here on a television program we had in Shreveport not oh several years ago now, but we had a new police chief from uh, from up north who claimed to be an expert on firearms. Said he'd been handling firearms since he was since he was uh, 18 years old, uh, <laughs> and I, I found that ludicrous because I had my first three guns before I was nine years old. Well, but you also had instruction in, in, in safely handling and safely using it. Oh, you better believe I And did. supervision without, without a doubt. Try to, it's real easy to use because all you have is a hook on your waist and you have another hook on a strap, okay? So all you're doing is you, you're hanging your gun up like you would on a peg gun rack. There is never anything attached to your equipment when you use the tri to. Okay, you just set the gun with one hook behind the trigger guard and the other hook on the barrel. To use it, you just push in on your towards your chest, pick the gun up to shoot it. Basically, you got seven different positions anywhere you want to range the barrel of the gun by just taking it off. It's a piece of Velcro strap onto a Velcro shoulder pad. You just put the gun into it, pick it up and shoot it any way you want. I know a lot of people like to walk around with their gun over their wrist. In this position, tucked up under your arm, it's real comfortable, except it breaks your wrist. Set the gun with the hook in front of the trigger guard, and you got the same position, except your hands free always. And what you want to do is you can take your trigger finger right at the trigger guard, pick the gun right up off the pod, and then you got it ready to shoot. Okay? The other position that you have is when you set the butt of the gun right on the hook on the side, and you can just hold your gun for field shooting in this manner, or you can just rest it back on your shoulder, shrug your shoulder, hit the gun, catch it, and the gun comes up. It's that simple to use. A lot of people like to go out riding on their four-wheeler and their ATV or climb into their deer stand or drag their deer. You got a securing strap that just peels back. All you do is set it on the barrel of the gun, wrap the barrel up, and you have a little securing loop down here on the pod. Okay, you take that and you secure that right over the hook of the gun. So you're securing the top and the bottom. You can ride your four-wheeler, you can climb your tree stand in this manner, if you'd like to pull out your deer, you can open your waist belt up, drop your right hand down through your straps, bring your left hand back up through it, the gun immediately goes on your back. Buckle it up, take away any of that slack, you don't want that, just readjust it, pull it up tight on your back, and that's the most secure back carry you'll ever have. You can drag your deer out any way you want to drag your deer out, climb your hands, use your binoculars, you're always hands-free with the tri-tote. Now then, friends, for information or to order one of the all-season tri-totes, call them at 1-800-231-1443. MasterCard or Visa, 
uh, $38.50 plus $6.50 shipping and handling. This is a special price for our shoot and show audience, so please identify to them that it is, uh, you did see it on the shoot and show. This is an excellent piece of equipment a lot of us would like to have, friends. 1-800-231-1443. And remember, friends, this would be a great Christmas gift. You don't have much time, so order today. You know, friends, in my opinion, socialism is the ultimate atheistic uh, uh, organization. And this is the reason why. They, they want to make government the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-doing, literally government, the god of a society. And it's just flatly not true. We've said before, the government is just people in offices in Washington. It's just other people. It's outrageous. Uh, some of the ultra-liberal uh, types, and there's an assault right now, uh, uh, Newt uh, and, and some of these fellows are talking about changing the welfare situation. Or, and look at Proposition 187 in, in California. If we can just get government out of, the, of most of the issues mm -hmm. that it involves itself with, mm -hmm. and term limits may do this. I know there's some reasons why you ought not have term limits, but there's some good reasons for term limits because people then come into office uh, from the citizenry mm -hmm. and see things more from the standpoint of citizens instead of from the standpoint of professional politicians. But if you're going to have term limits really work, you ought to keep people from from starting off as a as a alderman here somewhere and moving up to a mayor and then move up to a state representative and then to a state senator. and You know, that's a professional politician. Mm -hmm. Then they get into the Congress. Well, they aren't John Q. citizens coming up there. They're people that, that have made a business or, or a profession Career. of, of as my dad used to say, having their feet in the trough. Uh, well, the NRA wants some help. They want us and they want you, our listeners, if you see those ads or other charges being made in the broadcast media against NRA and the Second Amendment, to please contact the NRA Grassroots Division. And we've got an 800 number for them. I'm going to say this real slow so that you can copy it down. It's 1-800-392-8683. Let's try that again. It's an 800 number, 392-8683. And you need to let them know what was said, mm -hmm. the name of the station uh, that's airing the broadcast, the time and date it appeared, and if an official NRA representative had an opportunity to respond. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. Because you know you can get away with murder if, you, if you're the only, only side presenting an argument. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to have both sides of everything that comes up. Now, as I mentioned to you before, in the States it's happening. Uh, in New Jersey, the Assembly has passed a gun-free uh, school zone bill. Well, you know, that's, uh, uh, that's the mere possession of a, of a, quote, illegal firearm. I don't know what an illegal firearm is within a thousand feet of a school. Well, what are, suppose you live across the street from school. Uh, if you drive through a city, you just about can't avoid coming within a thousand feet of a school. Uh, at least once or twice on your way to town. Uh, now, illegal firearm. I can understand the illegal possession of certain firearms, such as fully automatic weapons. I can understand the illegal possession uh, idea, but not the fact that the firearm itself is illegal. It's not an illegal firearm. Now, they want to have enhanced penalties uh, whether the gun is, is ever used in a crime or not. Uh, Heaven knows, if we had a silly law like that in Louisiana, uh, I'd, I'd be in trouble all the time. I live across the street from a school. It's a private school, it's true. But, still a school uh, zone. It, it's, it's still a school, <coughs> and still a school zone. Uh, well, let, let's, uh, NRA wants some help now. Right. This is in New Jersey. The bill has been, has been passed in, uh, in one of the houses is now awaiting action by the Senate Education Committee, and New Jersey listeners are urged to contact the Senate Education Committee to urge them to vote no on that measure. Uh, New Jersey, uh, New Jersey got horrible laws in, in connection with guns, anyhow. Uh, in Wisconsin, despite the fact that Michigan gun owners in this last election 
defeated handily a gun control measure. Uh, the mayor of Madison, I believe, of Madison, has <clears throat> cast two tie-breaking votes to help railroad all of his gun control measures through the Common Council. And boy, that's representative government. You got a majority of people voting against it, and he he sticks it to them anyhow. I'd, I'd, I'd get a recall petition to, to get rid of that guy. Anyhow, in Fox Point, that's also in, in uh, Wisconsin, the village board will meet on December 13th to consider an ordinance which will ban the commercial sale of all firearms. Uh, so attend that. Voice your objections. But let me tell you, the answer to these things is what we did in Louisiana years ago. We didn't want to have to fight this battle, and every, as the expression goes, every Middlesex village and farm. We wanted to fight it once at the state legislature, which fortunately is a part-time job. We want to fight it one time every year in the state legislature and not have to fight it piecemeal in Shreveport and Bossier City and Cotton, Cotton Valley and every other place and every... We've got 64 parishes in Louisiana. Uh, and I don't know how, how many idiots are on all of these governing bodies. Uh, notice I said I don't know how many, but I suspect there are a good many. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Friends, you can communicate with the shooting show on CompuServe now. Our number is 7354230243024. Again, 7354230243024. And to join our shooting show gun club, call us at 1-800-895-7916. We take Visa, MasterCard, check money order, whatever you got. Join today, friends. We need to reach as many people as we can. You know, friends, this Colt 45 or something equivalent, I think, is extremely important for self-defense, but let me tell you about another kind of defense. How about mental defense? We need to know what's going on in this country, and trust me on this one, there is no better publication to do that than the New American Magazine. It comes every two weeks, twice monthly, and of course they cover subjects that we need to know about. They cover all sorts of issues, from the gun issues to what's going on in Congress to all sorts of news items from all around this country and around the world for that matter things that are absolutely essential to us as conservative gun-owning Americans. We need to know this. This is a tremendous bargain. It's $22 for a six-month subscription. And I'll tell you what, friends, you're going to read, you'll read the New American, and you're going to get angry, you're going to get mad, but you'll also find out what you need to do. You're going to find out facts that you will not find in any other organized news media publication. But trust me on this one. These people, we know them. And if they say it, you can take it to the bank. It is, in fact, true. And that brings up their 800 number. You can get the New American by calling 1-800-727-TRUE. And those numbers, of course, are 1-800-727-8783. The New American, $22 for a six-month subscription. It comes twice a month. Friends, you need this magazine if you want to know what's going on. And in times like this, we need both of these. We need our guns, and we darn sure need our information. Now, what I'm suggesting to you is exactly as I said we did in Louisiana years ago. Uh, we got a state preemption law passed, which means that lo localities cannot pass firearms laws. They are going to have to be done in the state legislature, so they apply equally statewide. That way you've got, a, you've got only, only one enemy to fight, 
and you've got them got to fight them just once a year in the state legislature instead of doing it piecemeal. And the handgun control knows about this, and that's why they, they tackle these little tiny communities and this place and that place and, and Madison and Fox Point and I don't know how many other, other places. Uh, the uh, anti-gunners have tried to pass gun ban laws in Milwaukee and Kenosha. Uh, it appears clear that Wisconsin badly needs a statewide firearms preemption law. And the NRA says that's going to be one of their high priorities for 1995. Uh, now, the Supreme Court can, can uh, side with the NRA. They did so uh, when uh, they struck down a claim by the Federal Elections Commission against the NRA. Uh, it, the decision revolved around whether, around an NRA challenge that the Federal Elections Commission was structured unconstitutionally because a commission included two members appointed by Congress. You know, we have a, a concept here of separation of powers. We've got three divisions of government. They're supposed to be separate from each other. You have the legislative, the executive, and the judicial. And where you've got a regulatory body like this, the Federal Election Commission, uh, and having two members appointed by Congress, you're mixing up executive powers with legislative powers, and the court declared that the Federal Elections Commission structure violated the separation of powers of the U.S. Constitution. Um, again, illustrating the need that Thomas Jefferson expressed, and I've expressed so often on this show before, to bind down government with the chains of the Constitution. Well, well said, sir. And friends, this is the point that, that we're making now. Our fight is, has only just begun. What we've done in this past election is only make a, a beachhead, literally, because these people who want to disarm us, look, this is not a set it and forget it type deal. I mean, these people have to be fought all the time. As we've said many times on the show, freedom is something that you have to work at a little bit every day, or there will come a day that which, which you don't know if you'll be, your work will be able to get it done or not. Johnny, I think you've got to work at it a whole lot every day. I think, I think you're right. So, uh, remember... Sarah Brady is behind a bunch of this stuff, and don't forget her words that we will never be able to achieve our dream of a socialist America until we totally disarm all those who would never consent. And I think the last election showed there are plenty of those of us who would never consent. But we, the assault goes on all around this country. That's why, one, our program is so important to reach more and more people all over this country. And it's so important that you get involved. Every last one of us who cares anything about this country, about our freedom, you get involved on the local election as well as on national election things. Friends, we've got to have our voice heard. We have to. We do not have a choice. We do not have an alternative. And make sure in all of these elections that you make the candidates express themselves. And let me tell you, uh, an equivocal answer uh, means a negative answer. If they tell you, well, uh, so and so, so and so, start going into a lot of stuff, uh, th uh, they're, they're not on your side. If they're on your side, they'll tell you so. If they won't give a yes or a no, right? They won't if, give a if they won't give a clear, mm -hmm. understandable English language answer. Uh, I had a, uh, my daughter lived in Colorado up until two weeks ago. And they had a candy, uh, uh, election for sheriff up there. It happened to be a man from Shreveport that was running. And I knew him. I'd known him for years. And we asked him, uh, my son-in-law and I asked him uh, where he stood on this, uh, on this question of firearms and where he stood on, the, on uh, uh, granting permits for concealed carry. And he circled the question. Went all the way around in, in a circle. Never did answer. Uh, well, ifs, ands, and buts. I, I told John as we walked away, I said, John, he, he's not on your side. Uh, people that are on your side will tell you so. Uh, it's sort of like an expression I heard some time ago. Uh, Roy, my, my father, told me. I was surprised at how much he knew. Uh, he said, any man that doesn't know where he stands with a woman doesn't. And that's exactly the way. If 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 you if they won't answer you on how they stand on firearms, you can bet they don't. And avoid them, avoid them like the plague.
Now that the Congress has passed the crime bill, it is important to be sure we know what happened. Obviously, the gun ban violates the Second Amendment, banning nearly 200 guns, the figure admitted by the Treasury Department, infringes the right of the people to keep and bear arms. To say that these guns need to be banned to fight crime is nothing less than a lie. They are used in well less than 1% of all the homicides in the country. The ban does do something that very few have talked about. As a Denver police spokesman put it when talking to a pro-gun writer, David Koppel, the ban ends the arms race between the people and the government in the government's favor. The assault on the Second Amendment is not all of the Constitution that was violated by the Congress and the President in the crime bill. The Fourth Amendment took a body blow also. The measure allows for an expansion of confiscation of people's property without even filing charges. That sure seems to make us insecure in our homes and papers from unreasonable search and seizure, the language of the Fourth Amendment. Providing money from Washington for local policing violates Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. If the authority is not granted to Congress by the Constitution, the Tenth Amendment makes it clear that the Congress has no jurisdiction. But any amount of federal financing of local police means a shifting or accountability of accountability from local communities to Washington. The end result of federal financing would be to replace our local chief of police with the Attorney General of the United States. Today, that means that Janet Reno would be your and my chief of police. That is sure not what the Constitution was talking about. The pork in the crime bill deserved opposition, but much more is at stake than the wasted billions of dollars. The pork is for social engineering programs, and they are as far from the spirit of the American government as night from day. Social engineering programs, whether midnight basketball or tens of thousands of social workers, presumes that the government should be controlling the people. The presumption is that you and I are all potential criminals. Therefore, our guns must be banned and everything else that we do must be controlled and regulated by the government. But our Constitution and Bill of Rights were written to have the people control the government. We need to get our government under control and fast. Let us, we the people, once again demand that our elected officials keep their oaths of office to uphold the Constitution. My friends, we have a couple of Smith & Wesson semi-automatics today that we're going to take a look at, do a, a brief comparison on before the sun goes down over there and it gets too dark out here. Anyway, we have the Smith & Wesson Model Sigma, uh, which is their newest, shall we say, state-of-the-art technology, the plastic frame with metal inserts. This is a 16-shot, 40 caliber uh, semi-automatic pistol, very, very similar to the Glock in both design and also in manufacture. And this is the more traditional Smith & Wesson semi-automatic. This is the Model 411. Now these two guns are going to be, also in 40 caliber might I add, these guns are going to be comparable in price, but they have very different methods of uh, manipulation because uh, both of them are recoil operated semi-automatic uh, pistols, but they do differ dramatically in the way they work. Well, let's take a look at that now. Friends, this is the uh, Sigma. And you can tell these are pretty nice guns. I especially prefer the grip over the Glock. And, of course, we've said before the grip angle is almost identical to that of the 1911, which I also like. This gun, of course, we know it's empty. It has a 15-round uh, magazine. It's a steel magazine, which I certainly like better than the plastic magazines. But this gun, of course, has a plastic frame and a takedown very similar. In fact, I think there's uh, some controversy going on between the folks at Smith & Wesson and at Glock over this particular gun, but uh, I'll leave that to them. But this gun has been very, very reliable. Uh, this particular gun has been, I believe, the most accurate 40 uh, caliber gun to come through the show. This particular one is very accurate. It has a, I don't know if you want to call it double action only, I guess we will because by uh, pulling the trigger it will both complete cocking the hammer and also release it so thereby the double action only there that's the only way the gun uh, functions in this particular case if you do pull the trigger uh, you'll have to retract the slide slightly very similar to a Glock so the gun can be fired again you can pull the trigger and if nothing happens well uh, you better get on that slide in a hurry because nothing else is going to happen if you continue to pull the trigger but this gun has been very well received uh, around the country from both uh, shooting enthusiasts as well as law enforcement. 
and I think the durability is going to be good on them. This gun, we've shot it some, not a whole heck of a lot, but it's performed extremely well. The Shoot and Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. What you're looking at is one of the neatest discoveries we've made in some time on the program. This is a bottle of Black Canyon black powder replacement. And one of the things you miss with this is since it has no sulfur in it, you don't have the mess that we normally associate with black powder shooting. Uh, it's more stable than black powder. It's a little safer to store and handle. And, and those of us who enjoy shooting these black powder firearms, you just don't have to spend all that extra time in cleaning because there's just not... Uh, not much mess at all. You need some of this if you enjoy shooting and hunting with black powder. So give them a call, Black Canyon Black Powder Replacement. Call them 800-622-8669. Again, 1-800-622-8669. Please tell them you saw it on the shooting show. Now that here is the 411, and it has a number of dramatic differences. We'll check it. Yes, we know it is It is empty. Uh, this gun has a... Uh, an 11 round magazine so the 411 is a 12 shooter versus the Sigma which is a 16 shooter I suppose but it has a conventional safety now this is your typical a double action semi-automatic design and here for the first shot the hammer is down you push the safety off and you pull the trigger and that will of course cock the hammer and release it now then on your second shot the gun, hopefully, is going to fire like it's supposed to, and then your second shot will come from the single action mode. Now, the double action trigger pull on this gun is 11 pounds. Also, by coincidence or whatever else, the Sigma is also 11 pounds. This particular gun is. And, it, in fact, it's, it uh, doesn't feel as heavy as the scale says. Now, then, in single action mode, you have on this particular gun a six pound trigger. So that's really where the rub comes with the double action semi-automatics one. Of course, this gun cannot be carried like the Colt. It cannot be carried cocked and the safety on it won't do it. You cock the gun, but the safety on it automatically decocks itself. And that was supposed to be an advancement. And it comes from, oh, I think a Walther design and who knows who thought it up back in the 30s with the P38. To my knowledge, that's the first double action semi-automatic pistol. Well, these things are supposed to be safer from those who uh, it makes nervous seeing a cocked and locked Colt type or Browning type semi-automatic. Now, we'll look at some of the uh, uh, other attributes of this in just a moment. But the big thing is, this gun can be carried on safe, like so, and you pull the trigger, the gun's going to fire. Now, the second shot, instead of that trigger being up here, it's going to be back here. And there is a definite transition. A lot of police officers have gone to guns like this and typically they will miss the first or second shot. This transition is a nasty one on any semi-automatic. Uh, the Smith & Wesson is as good as, honestly, the Smith & Wesson semi-automatics being as far as reliability as durability have been as good as any other manufacturer out there. But that double action uh, uh, mechanism is what's tricky. That's why for a new shooter, I certainly, and none of us here on the program, none of us recommend one of these guns because there is more complication. A double action semi-automatic does require more work. It's going to require more training. Now what will, what will typically happen? Uh, let's say a police officer takes a gun out, has to shoot the gun. First shot's like so, second shot's like this, and then the altercation is over with. 
all right, especially if they carry the gun safety off, which I don't uh, uh, personally recommend on these, just because, not because the gun's not safe, because it is, uh, because the shooter may forget about, uh, you need to do something, you need to push that safety off to shoot the gun, and then you have to drill in your mind when you're through shooting to apply that safety, because here's what's happening. You've got, literally after shooting the gun a time or two, a couple of times, well at least once it's gonna be in this condition, and some officers, and you know police officers like anybody else, they get excited during altercations, and what will happen, they'll put the gun back in the holster, they'll forget to decock it. They'll put it back in the holster, that trigger will snag something, you've got a light trigger pull, and bang, and there's a crease down the side of your leg. Not pleasant at all, so uh, these guns do take more work. Any double action semi-automatic is going to take more work. Now then, as I understand it, that's the reason for this type of gun, double action only, you only have one trigger pull. There is no external safety. You have a little uh, trigger safety here on this particular gun. I don't know what it's for, but they put it on there anyway. You have a two-piece trigger. Uh, the Glock has one similar to that. So it's to prevent just something getting in the trigger guard and snagging the trigger. The gun won't go off unless the entire trigger is pushed. The just top part, it, w it won't pull. Anyway, on this particular gun, this goes back to the revolver uh, principle of don't put your finger on the trigger and the gun won't go off. Well, that's our certainly uh, uh, true with the gun in mechanical, good mechanical uh, condition. This one is not confusing. It's just a different type mechanism. Folks, this is where SSK lives. This is the peak of the color. We just wanted to give you a look at it before we got into the commercial. Now grab your pencils and pens because you're going to need them pretty quick. This is an SSK Custom Thompson Center 375 JDJ. It's equipped with a custom frame that's engraved, an octagon barrel that's magnaported and chambered for the famous 375 JDJ cartridge. This is a 444 Marlin neck down to 375. It shoots bullets from 200 to 350 grains weight. It's probably at its best with its 270 grain Hornaday. We'll show you what it does to moose a little bit later. We know there's a lot of Ruger fans out there. This is one of our custom Rugers with a diamond shaped barrel. As far as I know, we're the only ones that do that. Take a look at that barrel. Isn't that nice? This is a conversion of the Ruger Super Red Hawk that we call a beast. It's dead flat in recoil. Zero muzzle rise. That's due to the SSK brake. A lot of us think shooting those steel targets fast and accurate and knocking them down real quick is a lot of fun. This is a custom Smith & Wesson and 45 ACP caliber designed for that purpose. Anytime. That was the 45 and this is the 44 Magnum Beast. Go. Folks, this is a 28-pound pumpkin that we cleaned out and put a little water in to get a good explosive effect. Try and match out with your 30-06. Here's another 28-pounder with two gallons of water in it. Yes, sir, just call SSK anytime y'all need a pumpkin gun. <laughs> Here's two and a half gallons of water. Those pumpkin and water hits are with the 375 JDJ. I'm JD Jones. I developed the 375 JDJ and the barrels for these contenders to shoot them. Anytime y'all need a pumpkin gun, a good handgun for hunting, action job, telescope sights, or custom rifle of any kind, give us a call. We'll help you out. For information on the entire lineup of SSK Industries products, give them a call 
Area 614-264-7217. Again, 614-264-7217. You know, friends, it's rare in any field of manufacture that one particular company has a clear-cut advantage over the others. Well, in this case, it's Corbon Ammunition, Corbon Bullet Company, because they make the best handgun, long gun, and even some specialty caliber ammunition that's been real hard to get in the past. If you really want your handgun or rifle to perform at their absolute best, you need to find some Corbon ammunition. For information on where you can get Corbon, information on their product line, call them. Corbon Bullet Company, 1-800-626-7266. Again, give them a call. It's a free call. 1-800-626-7266. Trust me on this one. Corbon is the best there is. Now, friends, whatever handgun, for that matter, any gun, but especially handguns. You know, we have a lot of uh, people who are buying handguns now because they're afraid to ride up and down the road in their cars, with, with good reason in a lot of places, because carjacking is becoming more and more common. And they're afraid, uh, and the good news is that these women are finding out, you ladies are discovering that, that you, one, can protect yourselves, and two, the bad news is you may have to protect yourself in today's crazy society. But if you do go out and get a semi-automatic handgun, please, please, please take the gun down to a range somewhere. If you don't know how the gun operates, please go talk to somebody at a shooting range. Get them to instruct you. Now, this is no joke because if you're going to have to use a piece of equipment like this that may mean the difference in your life and, and absolute death or certainly the difference in you being attacked and well, as we talked about recently on the program, some one of these uh, uh, goofy columnists who writes, uh, uh, has letters people write in and she answers them in the paper, had said some time ago, well, if, if someone tries to commit a crime or an assault on you, well, don't resist, just, just take it. Just lay there, well, maybe they won't hurt you too bad. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You know, I'll bet you that that, that particular woman lives in an area where she is highly protected uh -uh. Friends, we run out of time on this week's program for this feature, and we'll come back to it on our next program. Incidentally, if you would like to advertise on the shooting show, you can call us at 1-800-SAVE-YOU-GUN. That's 1-800-728-8486. Our staff will be very happy to talk to you. Well, friends, it's happened again. We've run out of time for today's program. From Kurt, the judge, myself, we want to thank everyone for being with us for today's program, and we look forward to seeing you on the next shooting show.